The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to talk a little bit about these markets this morning. We posted the DAX. As you can see, it had virtually no reaction, you know, to what happened with our uh, tariff thing that's going on in the news, which was twice as big as the one before, from $50 billion to $100 billion. You would think that soybeans and corn would have gotten really hammered. Uh, soybeans were down uh, very, very slightly and have actually come back quite a bit. Corn was only down three cents, so it's telling you that even though China uh, might have some tariffs, they're still going to be eating. So uh, keep in mind, um, the stock market rallied a little bit. We'll talk about that, but you can see that that DAX chart really didn't have much to do with this. By the way, at our break today, we're going to have one of our favorite guests, uh, award-winning market timer, uh, Bill Meridian from Cycles Research will be on. And so it'll be interesting to see he's got something special for us, I believe, regarding the bond market. If we take a look here at the FTSE on the daily, you see we're in the midst of a nine-day rally off of that butterfly pattern that we had several days ago, uh, actually eight days ago. And uh, we're right at a 3.82 and a 78% retracement. And it's also equal to the last rally that we had uh, in early February. So it's going to be some resistance up in here, but it certainly doesn't look like the end of the world that they are talking about sometimes on Bloomberg and CNBC and some of the other ones where they're they're talking about all the fear that's going on. Let's take a quick look here at the E-mini S&P here this morning, folks, because uh, I just was watching it last night and I sent this out to folks uh, to let them see what was going on. If you notice here, this is only a 15-minute chart because we're having such big swings that you have to see you know what these patterns look like over a you know five or six day period in a 15 minute chart will give you that if you'll notice last night the market stopped exactly at a 50 percent retracement of the move from the bottom that we had on april the fourth and if you'll notice the two extra highs that we had uh, that happened on the third and fourth we stopped exactly at that point and then since that time I drew in a little trend line just to, you know, to show you uh, what was happening there. Now, if you really want to have some fun, is to just blow up, you know, the the action from last night from around, uh, I guess it was around 8:30, let me see, 17, around 8:30 at night um, Tucson time, uh, which would have been 11:30 um, in the in the east. You'll notice that each of these. Uh, retracements was an exact 61% retracement or 78% retracement. So uh, these are numbers are pretty, pretty, pretty accurate. This tells us that there should be some pretty strong resistance up here at the uh, 26, uh, uh, 52 level. Uh, that's really what it looks like. But whether that's right or not, you know, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But that's what it looks like. It's uh, very, very interesting. In fact, uh, you know, stop and think that the um, the, the tariffs were uh, twice as much as they were back in uh, on April the 2nd, so that's really, uh, really not too much, so we'll be able to see. We have a question here about Rich Anderson being on. Uh, yeah, Rich will be on and hopefully next week. We have a very special guest. A new guest is going to be on Monday, Tim Boast. He's a very famous financial astrologer out of one of my favorite places on this planet, Sarasota, Florida. And uh, he'll be on at uh, 9.30 on Monday. But we got Bill Meridian today who's, you know, he's right way, way up there. He's a lot of fun. He really knows his stuff. And he's going to be talking to us uh, at around 9.30. But we do have a new guest coming in. And we do have Rich coming in. Uh, again, you know, we had the bottom come in in the cattle and hogs. We we talked a lot about that yesterday. I don't think it's any, it, not necessary to uh, replay any of that. But uh, that's something that we, we certainly you know, ought to keep in mind. Now, since we were talking about the S&P and, uh, you know, the reaction that it made, I wanted to bring up the, the chart of the Dow E-mini here, folks, because uh, when we look at these numbers, we, we've talked about this many times on here, and that's the 20-man line. If you'll notice uh, what we did here uh, on the, the, the 
Dow Jones, which was even more important, I believe. Well, no, it's not more important because the S&P is like 10 times the the volatility. Well, not the volatility, but the volume and open interest is huge in the S&P. It's, you know, a very, very small amount in the Dow Jones futures. But look at the Dow Jones futures from the high on the 27th of March. I drew that 20-man line in. It stopped exactly at the 50% retracement was also the old high, just like we looked at in the S&P. Now, when these numbers stop exactly at the same number, I, I, this is my opinion that it's probably trying to tell you something. And you know, yesterday's high was a near-perfect 78% retracement from the high on the 21st. So this is a normal correction. Now, if we drop another 250 or 300 points today and close below uh, 24,000, we've set up a very, very bearish scenario uh, coming in for Monday, but we have to to wait and see what's going on. I know the jobs report was a big a big disappointment, but the market's not reacting very much to it, and it's not reacting very much, you know, uh, on a relative basis compared to what the, uh, you know, what they're talking about in the world. I personally think that they're playing they're playing poker, and they're they're, they're seeing who's going to play chicken, who's going to play buff who's going to bluff folks folks when you when you're playing poker and, and I, you know maybe some of you play some of you don't but the one thing that you have to look for when you're playing is to watch what the other players are doing and one of the biggest tells and the tell is when a when a person is telegraphing what his hand is and when you're playing against a new player and uh, the the time for betting comes in and he starts fumbling with his chips you can almost bet he doesn't have anything or you've got him beat that's nearly a 100% now, you can't do that against a professional poker player because he uses that as an advantage. But with new players, uh, just look at them. And uh, if they start reaching or playing for their chips as it's time for betting, you can almost bet they're either ready to bluff or they don't have anything. It, it's just an amazing how that works. If you ever play poker, try it sometime, and you'll see that it's really an interesting thing uh, you know, to take a look at. Uh, now that we've had this uh, market come out and uh, with the jobs report and everything, I wanted to uh, bring to your attention the uh, the chart of the Treasury bonds, and I believe Bill is going to be talking about the bond market today. Uh, and if you'll look at this, you'll you'll see that we've completed a Gartley pattern after we made that big A B C D uh, butterfly pattern up at the uh, 170 147 level. And we had a very bullish jobs report that should be for bonds. In other words, they should not be raising rates. But as you can see, the bonds have rallied. They can't even make a 382 off the high three days ago. That's a very, very negative sign, uh, from my opinion, at least early in the morning. But this this is a, a relatively uh, bullish chart if you're thinking rates you know, should drop a little bit. But they're not rallying very much, given the fact that you've had pretty good, you know, pretty good, uh, you know, uh, news in in their favor, so I, I'm not sure that that's what's uh, that's what's going to happen. So we'll have to uh, to wait and see if if it's going to unfold that way. Now, someone's asked a question about those patterns that I posted for the New York stock for the Dow Jones and all for the S and P folks. Those are just normal technical patterns with uh, retracements and uh, support and resistance. That's all it is. That's right out of technical analysis 101 right out of the Gartley book, right out of John Murphy's book, and a couple others that have been around. Anyway, we'll take a look at this in just a minute. We'll have Bill Meridian on in about 15 minutes, 877-927-6648 if you have any questions. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the platinum market. We don't trade this, but we watch it very closely because it's tied to the gold and the silver being a precious metal. If you notice here on the platinum, uh, this is the chart that we had in our 24-7 newsletter that we did on Sunday. That we're looking for the bottom to come in around this 9-10, 9-11 area. And uh, the low that we had this, so far this morning is 9.1180. We're trading uh, above that right now. So keep an eye on this because this might be a prelude to what could possibly be happening, you know, in the gold and silver market. As you know, uh, we have a very strong uh, bullish bias in the gold. Whether that's right or not uh, remains to be seen, but it should be. Uh, well, let's put this up. I thought that it posted. Let's just try it again. Thanks, uh, Dollar Bill, for letting me know that. That should post now for sure. But uh, you'll notice what's interesting about this. Uh, there it is. Thank you, folks. Uh, about two French fries short of a happy meal this morning. But go back and look at the uh, look at the chart on this platinum between February and April. You'll notice that big down move. And then if you move it forward, you'll see it again. And now what we're looking at is the first major ABCD pattern uh, that's occurring. We had one at the 618 that didn't work, and now we've got one at the 786. <clears throat> Excuse me, that might have worked, but we'll see uh, if it's going to hold or not. But it's it's an interesting pattern, and platinum has been sort of a roadmap, you know, to gold and silver. But we'll we'll have to w w wait and see whether the gold map, <laughs> whether the roadmap is going to uh, going to hold up or not. So that's the main thing that we're that we're watching this morning. Um, we're having some pretty good volatility and swings this morning, which is really good. You know, we've had the the market in the S&P has already moved 20 points up, well, 15 points up, 17 points down. So it's had some pretty good swings already, and we're seeing some nice moves uh, in the, uh, the currency markets, uh, which is usually after a jobs report. So we'll watch these very, very closely. The Canadian dollar continues to uh, work in our favor. We're still looking for around 126 as our first objective after we made that 131 level, which was a perfect ABCD pattern on the daily chart and just had about everything that you could possibly ask for, you know, for a trade. And it seemed to be working at least thus far. Now, getting back to the cattle market and the hog market and the um, agricultural markets, uh, we had this huge rally uh, right off of limit down the other day. 
the markets have held up relatively good. Uh, so we think that we've had a pretty good bottom now in the hogs and, and the cattle. We'll have Rich Anderson on next week, and hopefully Simon only. I'm trying to get Cy scheduled uh, straight so he can uh, spend a half hour with us. And believe me, that's no easy task because he's one busy camper. But these grains uh, haven't backed off as much. And when you stop and think that the, the um, tariffs were twice as much as the ones before. They said 50 billion the first time and a possibility of 100 billion the second time. And this, this sounds like a giant poker game, folks, because if this was really going to uh, come on, you know, we'll be able to see. I've, I've tried to get Shane on, but uh, from the Wolf Trader, but he's just really swamped, especially early in the morning when the, uh, uh, when the markets open just at the time we're having, you know, our, uh, our show. That's his busiest time of the day, so it's a little difficult for him to get on. But I'm going to try to get one recorded. Maybe that's that would be my next guest to see if uh, see if we can do that. So we will do our best to try to get him on. And when he has something really interesting, like I did on Monday, I'll post it because uh, you know, yes, I really think platinum's a buy, Mike. It's up about six bucks from when we were talking a little uh, since early this morning, but I still think it's a buy. It's a beautiful pattern down there. Uh, right at the 78% level. And remember, you know, gold can't even, you know, make lower lows. So that's another sign to take a look at it. Now, I, since we have, uh, I just want to bring this up. This is what, uh, this is, I want to show you last night. I, I sent this out last night right after the news came out on the, uh, on the, on the tariffs just to show you the reaction because, you know, the S&P, you know, dropped over 50 handles uh, right off the bat. It came right down to that, uh, you know, the old high that we had back there at the uh, 2620 held that level. Getting below 2620 this morning would really be negative, you know, to the market for a short term because, you know, we're looking at, at really good volatility here, and that's, that's what you really like to see. Any move above the... Uh, 26 uh, uh, 50 uh, 2660 level in the um, uh, let's try it again Larry 2670 level in the e-mini S&P would be construed as relatively bullish and of course we got the weekend who who knows what the news could be over the weekend but uh, the markets are actually holding up really well given the fact that there's a potential trade war out there and believe me I'm not so sure that it's a uh, it's going to be that big a deal. Remember, we have a 500 billion, that's B, billion dollar trade deficit with, uh, you know, with China. And believe me, that that is on their side. They're, they, they are selling us stuff, folks. So, you know, they, they're the ones that, that, that have the biggest, uh, biggest risk here. Because if they can't sell it to us, believe me, you can't get absorbed by South America or uh, North Africa or South Africa or even Europe. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that uh, this is a poker game and uh, Mr. Uh, Trump has more chips than China when it comes to this trade deficit because they're the ones that uh, do the selling. And, uh, you know, if, <laughs> if they can, if, you know, well, anyway, we'll see what happens. You know, I don't know anything about it, folks. I look at these darn charts, and that's all I look at. That tells me whether they're, you know, scared or not. I mean, I got four emails last night regarding what's going on with the tariffs, and I answered them all at the same time. I don't under, I don't know. But you know what? I don't think anybody else does either. But if you look at the chart, you know, you're uh, you're looking at something that could be, you know, really, uh, you know, really very interesting. So we'll see. But just keep in mind that this is what we've got moving here, and we'll see what's going on. I've got gold moving a little bit. We're up about 13 bucks off the open, so we'll see if that means anything or not. And we got bonds. The bonds are moving up now a little bit. They should have some resistance up here around the uh, the 145.30 level. That's a 61% retracement off the previous high back here. But long term, the bonds uh, really have a very, very bearish pattern. And uh, I, I just just think this one is just something that's going to look you're going to look down the road here you know a few uh, a few le uh, level a few time frames later and you're going to see that how bearish the bonds are i.e higher uh, uh, <laughs> higher interest rates uh, yes i saw elvis on stage many times uh, whenever he was playing in las vegas we took the the four-hour trip from Westlake Village over there. I think we saw him four times, and we also saw him the time when he gave the little hound dog puppy uh, to this little girl that was really quite good. He was really good. You could get in uh, with a dinner with a $100 tip, 
I think the dinner was like 40 bucks. And if you gave the maitre d' $100, you got a seat right up front, and it was worth every single penny. And that was back in, oh, six, 70, 71. He played at the International Hotel uh, in Las Vegas that later was the Hilton. Anyway, it was. I'm a big Elvis fan, so let's move on from there. We'll see see what happens to the next. Of course, I'm a big Beach Boy fan, too. Anyway, let's move on. And I'm also a fan of Mozart for all of you classical folks. Let's move on and talk just a little bit about the Euro because we had a really interesting pattern form here last night. I'll bring it up to you. Well, stay, stay tuned for uh, Bill Meridian. I'll post this. You'll see the Gartley at the 78 cent level in the Euro. That shows you the important support there. Stay tuned for Bill Meridian. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I think we have Bill Meridian on the line from Vienna, Austria. Bill, how are you? Uh, great, Larry. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I just uh, got back from Abu Dhabi about oh. uh, two weeks ago, so I have a suntan and I had great food and <laughs> all, all the things I do down there. How is the weather down there this time of the year? Is it uh, summertime? Or it's it's winter time there, isn't it? It's it was 82. Oh well, that's that's relatively nice because it gets to over 110, doesn't it, during the summer? It uh, sure does. 
Yep. Okay. Why don't we start out with uh, what you'd like to start out with today? Go ahead and tell the folks what you're looking at. I know you've had some. You had an article in Forbes or something about bonds, haven't you? Yeah, that. Uh, I'm going to go over that here. I just put up okay. another one today. Okay. Um, but uh, do you have my um, PowerPoint? Yes, your, your, your first part, your page two of the PowerPoint is up because uh, we posted page one before yeah. you. Before, there you go, page two. Now we're, we're sure. on page two. Well, it's a bond sell signal, which uh, I'm rating that first because I feel it has the greatest degree of reliability. Mm -hmm. Stocks, uh, just to answer your question, I, I know everybody's, I think it looks like an incomplete correction to me. I'm not a master Elliott Wave counter. I rely on other people who are very accurate, like uh, Bob Prechter, Peter Goodburn, and um, Paul Nesbitt. And uh, I think there's probably one more leg coming down to 20, 2480, 2530. Mm -hmm. uh, gold is stuck in a trading range. 1300 to 1362. I doubt very much it's getting above 1362 soon because it's in the weak part of its seasonal cycle and the dynamic cycle it's pointing down. Mm -hmm. So it's in a trading range at the moment. I think it's headed to the bottom of the trading range. Now, the oil cycles between now and about seven to 10 days from now are topping and um, the US dollar will rally. I have a graph on that at the end. If the US dollar is rallying, then it's going to be for gold, oil, or any commodities to make any headway. And oil should have um, broken. It got halted at 66. 66. I didn't think it would, uh, it would go through there. It has come back. So that's been topping the rally. So I'm going to sell her if it runs to 66, 67. I'm going to sell because the cycles are turning down. April is the single strongest month of the year, March and April, to hold oil. So um, by the end of April, I would be out of oil, but I think it's going to be sooner than that sometime in the next week. Okay. And as I said, the U.S. dollar will rally, which will go over that. And next month, my book will be coming out, Master, Mastering Geopolitical Corrections, Applied Mundane Astrology, which mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that up front in case we ran out of time. So let's go down to bonds on page three. Okay. You betcha. Yeah. I'll put it up right this now. Is a, this, is, this is a great setup because it's very clear. It's up against a downtrend line. It's in a bear market. And the cycles are turning down here just as it rallies to the uh, to almost a perfect short. So uh, I am long the um, TBT, which is the double short 20-year bond ETF. The 10-year bond ETF has uh, too little volume, 3,000 shares a day as opposed to 3 million for mm -hmm. the TBT. So let's go down one more slide. Okay. There we go. Now, notes finished the month of March higher. Notes tend to decline in April if March is positive. You've only had 11 Marches, since March is usually a weak month for bonds, in which the 10-year note has closed higher. And in the following month, April, it's been up four times and down seven times. So that's one part of the analysis. Now, if we go down to the next slide on page five. Okay. Here is the monthly cycle, and this is the uh, distant view. We have a close-up view in the next slide, but as you can see, it doesn't bottom until about the third week in May, mm -hmm. except for a little sideways movement there in mid-month. So if we go to the next slide, okay, that's more of what I'm looking at. So that, that is why I, I was calling for a short on the notes. It was just mm -hmm. under that resistance line, and the cycle was turned down. And based on the dynamics, the fact that March was up, April tends to be down. Mm -hmm. So if you go down one more slide now to page seven, okay, that is the monthly histogram for notes 1982 to the present. And you can see the lowest expected return is in March. And it's about the third lowest is in April. So we're in a very weak seasonal time of the year until we get out to July. Okay. And by the way, there have been more highs in the month of May and more lows in the month of June than any two months. So now, where is it likely to go? If you go to page eight, there's the monthly. And I'm not showing the, that trend line goes way back, but it, it shows support at 118. So that is the downside target at the moment. That makes sense. Now, the next slide and, is re related to the TBT, correct? That is the TBT. 
it is the ProShares Ultra Short 20 Year Treasury ETF. For every 1% bonds decline, this ETF increases by 2%. And as you can see, it is well oversold and um, it did that on a much lower volume. And it has turned up here as the cycle on bonds has turned down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next slide is the that that is the long term US dollar index, and you'll notice it stopped falling and it has started to trend up. But if you look at the long term, I mean in those if I stretch this out, those little wiggles in the market are quite substantial because they're um, each one is about two to four weeks. But on this very long term scale, you can see this matches, if you recall, the very long term chart I did that showed the dollar from was it eighteen hundred? Mm -hmm. And it has bro broken out of, uh, I should have put that slide in here, in fact, mm -hmm. on my next falling uh, wedge to the upside. Yeah, this so is that, a really that is bullish. That's how the markets look. Yeah, that's a really bullish chart, that's for sure. Regarding the oil market, well, we have I'm a question. Thinking, oh. Yeah, sure. We have Go a ahead. question from one of our listeners about the oil market. Uh, we're trading here just a little below 64 uh, today. Would you be interested in selling it, say, at 64 and a half, 65, or would you still be waiting for it to get back to 66? Well, the, the, there were two cycles. There's a short term and a long term. The one had turned down on turns down April 7th, and the other one April 16th. And so I'm I'm looking at the longer cycle, and I'm waiting for a run toward um, the higher level, 66, 67. It may still break through there, but if it breaks through, the cycle still turns down, and then the seasonality turns negative when you get out of April. Mm -hmm. Bill, we have one other question from one of our listeners, and you, you made a mention about mundane astrology. Uh, do you want to explain sure. to, to the folks what that means? That's the astrology of politics and countries, about Changes okay. in geopolitics, of which my teacher, Charles Jane, probably did more work than nobody's ever read or heard of because it's all in old magazines, but I went back and preserved it all, which is how I wrote the book on eclipses. But I had so much extra material that I started writing this book in 2009, and I just finished it. So it'll be out in May. Well, that'll be good. You'll In May, it'll be out. It will be out in the hardcover. Yeah. It will be a, a PDF, or how is it's, it going to be? soft cover book available at billmeridian.com oh great we'll, we'll, we'll have you on when that's that comes out but let's take a little break sure. and we'll be right back with bill meridian from uh, cycles research vienna austria 877-927-6648 Would you like exposure to the foreign currency markets without any downside risk to your principal? Then consider the Petro Currencies Market Safe CD from Everbank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD leverages the performance of four equally weighted currencies from these top oil-producing countries, Brazil, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. This CD features a 200% leverage factor, which means that your potential upside payment will be double the currency's average performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And if the returns are negative, your principal's 100% protected. Returns are based on CD performance with no correlation to the price of oil, and there is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. The April 19th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA FSB member FDIC. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Thicker Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. 
See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. And, Bill, I posted the uh, article that's uh, out there on uh, Forbes, and evidently it's getting a lot of hits on YouTube. But uh, uh, do you want to tell the folks a little bit about Edward Dewey? I mean, he ran the foundation for the study of cycles. Uh, I was I'm sorry, Larry, about. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm yes, listening. now I understand. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, yeah. I'll tell you uh, the, uh, the publicly known story and the real story. <laughs> Uh, I believe he went to Harvard. He worked for the Department of Commerce. He um, started the foundation of the study of cycles in 1940 with a grant from uh, – who is the insurance magnate from Chicago? Um, w. Clement Stone? I forgot his name. That's it. I yeah. yeah he, got, he got a grant from him to start the foundation. And they researched cycles, and in the early 70s, realizing he was at the end of his days – he published a piece that had a big effect on me. He says, as far as I can tell, after 32 years of analyzing cycles, I believe they are all related to the planets. And he published an article called Mercury and Stock Prices, in which he showed that if you have a Sun-Mercury conjunction in the sign of Capricorn, which he called the 10th sector, because he wasn't allowed to say Capricorn, <laughs> that uh, the stock market rallies up into that day about 89% of the time. So the first time the astro analyst ever lit up on my uh, appeared on my screen back at Payne Weber in New York in 86 I ran that and so it was certainly true mm -hmm. so in other words December's usually up 70 percent of the time but if the sun is conjunct mercury in Capricorn which it can only happen in uh, December or sometime in January then it's up 89 percent of the time in the preceding 21 days now the real story is that he roomed with the well-known uh, insurance guy Huntington Hartford if you're in the insurance group you know who he is and Dewey said, I think that planets have a relation to the events going down, on down here on the Earth. And he said, I'd like to start a foundation. He said, let me introduce you to our college buddy, David Williams, now known as the late Lieutenant Commander David Williams, well-known oh astrologer goodness. after he retired. Wow. And he, he taught Dewey how to cast round horoscopes, in other words, horoscopy. And Hartford said, I'm convinced, but if I tell Clement Stone you want to use astrology, you'll never get a grant. Let's call it the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, leave the planets out. And so just before Dewey passed away, he let the pussy get out of the bag. Mm -hmm. Wow. Bill, you know, I met uh, Commander Williams. He lived in Scottsdale, Arizona. And when I wrote my book, Astro yep. Cycles, A Trader's Viewpoint, he was about 90. And he endorsed the book. And that, you know, made uh, made it very, very successful. But what a, what a gentleman he was. And I had no idea of the relationship between Dewey. That that's, oh, yeah. that Most really don't solidifies. That. Yep. Wow, that is really cool. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about yeah, the Sox. Go ahead. By the way, David, when he was 16, told me he lied about his age and enlisted with the cavalry, telling them that he was 18 and rode across the border to chase Pancho Villa. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I actually stayed <laughs> at Pancho that? Villa's. Anyway. I stayed at. I stayed at Pancho Villa's summer house. It's now a bed and breakfast down in <laughs> Alamos, Mexico now. Oh, it's old, old, old days coming in. Go ahead, Bill. Let's talk about this sock cycle if we could. 
Yeah, well, this is a new Forbes feature. I just sent out the introductory article today. The uh, web link is on the next page. But uh, do we describe cycles as the evaluation of rhythmic fluctuations in a succession of numbers? This means that cycles are isolated through observation and then evaluated in accordance with the principles of mathematical probability. Cycles, therefore, are probability patterns found in data. So the, that whole explanation is now up on Forbes. Forbes only went up a couple hours ago because this Sunday I'll be putting up a stocks this week column in which I tell you what the software is telling me the best trades for the week are. So well, that's, let's how do look people at a cycle. Get, how do people get access to that, Bill? You go to Forbes.com. That's it. Oh, okay. Just, there you go. <laughs> it, 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 the first one goes up this Sunday, but this is – now, if anybody, it's, I write under the heading Great Speculation, so if you put in my real name, S-A-R-U-B-B-I, Sarubi, Great Speculations, Forbes, you should get the articles. If not, you can email me and I can send this presentation to you. Just uh, put Larry P. Show in the heading so I know you want the PD, this uh, PowerPoint, which will make it easier. So let's go down to the so – this is a, a typical cycle. That is the semiconductor index, the SOX. The price data is the heavy black line. The dashed gray line is the sum of all the cycles, and the individual cycles is that nice rainbow of cycles that you see. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, not, I don't show the individual cycles. If you go to the next page, you'll see what, I'm, what I mean here. This is the latest run for Bank America, BAC. And, and I have the buy and sell signal switched on here. And you'll note it just hit uh, it just hit a low and has turned up or at least flattened out before it turns down again. But that is the short-term weekly trading cycle. And now let's go to the next page. Here are the numbers generated. This is this is the important part. It uh, the data runs from 1980 through 2018. The software takes the last 12 months and leaves that out of sample. So the 26 trades that you see were all generated in the last 12 calendar months. The buy signal successful, you see, is about 77%. Sell signals successful, 62%. If you simply bought and held the stock, you're up 25%. But if you followed those signals, you're up 82%. The outperformance is 56%. Okay. So that that is a summary of what you see in that uh, in that cycle graph. Mm -hmm. So if Bill we go down. Bill, yes. one, I hate to interrupt you, but we have a, a special request to talk about NEOM, the city in Saudi Arabia. Do you know much about that, NEOM? It's a new city I've being built in Saudi Arabia. I've, he I've heard about it, but I don't know that much about it. I just came back from there, and uh, I can tell you if we have some time left over, I can tell you what I got from my trip. Okay. Let's go on to the next slide. That we've got some other slides okay. that we really need to cover. Go now, ahead. Front, frontier Communications. This is uh, this this was just run. So this is showing you the same numbers. It's showing you that 83% of the longs were profitable, 100% of the shorts. There were 13 trades in the last year. And its current position is short, but it is giving us a buy signal on April 20th. Let's go to the next slide. The recommendation strength is very high. In fact, it's the highest in the S&P. But let's look at the graph first, and then I'll tell you what that is. The, uh, you see it is currently on a sell signal. You see that April 20th buy, the green line. The um, recommendation strength is a measurement not only of the probability that it will turn up, but it's a measurement of the coming expected magnitude. So in other words, if I told you, Larry, you have 83% chance of a tiny gain or 83% chance of a substantial gain, you would take the latter. That is what the recommendation strength is. Mm -hmm. So that is um, – this will be appearing, as I said, uh, stocks this week will be starting this Sunday on Forbes.com. And this last so, one is about the oh, USA-Russian yeah, relations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the uh, the uh, the Department of State Office of the Historian has the beginning dates of diplomatic relations with America and all foreign countries. So that's where that date comes from, July fourteenth, eighteen oh nine. But I got that out of some books before they even posted that on the internet. That is uh, the sun at 21 degrees Cancer. And what is happening at 21 degrees Cancer this July? There's an eclipse right in that degree. Not only that, the eclipse is exactly opposite Pluto at 21 Capricorn. Now, 2021 Capricorn Cancer are the, without getting into details, the north and south heliocentric nodes of Pluto, which means it's very strong. And it's also exactly opposite the place where it was when it was discovered. 
<laughs> Let's take a so, break here. And can yeah. you stay with us for a couple more minutes, Bill? Sure can. Yeah, yeah, we'll take absolutely. Pay a few bills. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. And we'll take up with this USA, Russia diplomatic relations. Everybody has an interest in that. There are five reasons traders and investors fail to spot bear markets. It's a set of five very specific patterns that have preceded every bear market during the last 130 years. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and the number one market timer in the nation as ranked by Timer's Digest for the S&P 500 for the last three, six, and 12 months. You see, timing is everything. And on Wednesday, April 11th at 5 p.m., I'm going to share with subscribers exactly how to time the next bear market. Look, the last three bears averaged a decline of 49%, which means you've got to earn 82% just to make your money back. Wouldn't it be easier to avoid the next bear market altogether? Sure, countless experts tell you that markets can't be timed, but what they're really saying is that they can't time the markets. So let me teach you how. Sign up for Mastering Probability by coming to the homepage of TFNM.com to begin your 30-day money-back guarantee trial membership and learn the exact tools that I use to time the markets. And if you can't attend live, don't worry, because the workshop will be archived on your members page for the next 30 days. Don't let that next bear market eat your porridge. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, could we talk a little bit more about this USA uh, Russia yeah. chart? The bottom line, yeah. is it good or bad? Uh, it's, it's bad as in very. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Which you have, you have Pl Pluto is being opposed by the eclipse, and for these for the astrologers out there, and it's right on the Mars-Saturn midpoint. And the Mars-Saturn equals Pluto is like to be forced to do something under the under the pain of death or something like that. And um, and the fact is that Pluto is opposite the place where it was when it was discovered in the 30s, and it's on its own node, so it's extraordinarily powerful. Mm -hmm. So. You know, I've been saying all along that uh, you know Russian Russian U.S. relations are going to get worse, but this is uh, the worst of the worst. So don't do not expect that to turn around this year. And my friend Jim Dunnigan at StrategyPage.com, where you get military news you don't get anywhere else, says there have been a number of close brushes with you know U.S. and Russian fighter planes along the Syrian border, and a number of near clashes. So that situation is worse than uh, the media is letting us know. Wow. And if we can just go to the last, that's my, my advertisement. Is uh, I, I put that one up next because that's okay. very important because you've got and some great I stuff just, coming out. 
I'd like, yeah, I'd like to. I was down in Abu Dhabi for two weeks. I met with my own old friend Mubarak Al Mansouri, who's now governor of the Central Bank, and we we went together. We went to a camel farm and two weddings, and which is a real great combination when you're wearing a business suit. Um, so anyway, the they've let go of 60 to 80 thousand people down there. Retail sales between the internet and this loss of of a customers has really uh, hit the retail area. In fact, I asked the cab drivers who uh, all speak perfectly good English, they're working 15 to 16 hour days just to stay afloat. And um, Saudi Arabia has put an expat tax on the expat saying, well, we can pay taxes at home. Why should we live here and pay taxes? So they're packing up and leaving, which that was not a smart move. And they've got a VAT wow. tax now in Abu Dhabi, which has oh, killed yeah. the diamond shading operation one of my friends set up. Wow. So it looks pretty bearish down there at the moment. Well, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend. And as soon as so you get your book ready, you know, give me a jingle yeah. and we'll have you back on. The folks have already asked about it. So uh, thanks for joining us. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow!